This is my new sewing project book. It's called Half Yard Vintage and it's full of 23 projects for you to enjoy that have all been inspired by the kind of fabric I was brought up with really, the linens, the lace, the gorgeous neutral um, and natural colours and tones. There's doilies and um, really kind of pretty, delicate florals. Lots of different ideas for you as well, from handbags to tissue box covers. Uh, there's a notebook cover and for lots of different um, kind of levels as well. So as a beginner, hopefully there's going to be lots of techniques that you can learn in here. And if you're a little bit more experienced as a sewer, then do take some of the ideas and my inspiration and make them all your own. So these are a few of the things that you're going to find in the book but what we're going to do in this video is show you how to make the tea cosy which I think is really pretty and it can be made in any size for any size of teapot that you like. So this is what you need and this is how we're going to make it. Now before we go into um, the exact measurements and the fabrics that you need, I thought I'd show you how the tea cosy actually fits onto the teapot to give you a better understanding of the way that it works and how to measure your teapot as well. So basically you've got the drawstring that goes through these two side panels, so your teapot sits inside. So two side panels that are gathered around the circle at the base. It's a very, very simple design when you think about it. And because they're all sewn together with the seams on the outside, then that's why you've got the bias binding around the bottom, just to make that nice and neat. Now, I've got quite a dainty little teapot here. But I'll show you how to measure it, just in case yours isn't exactly the same size. This is an 800 mil teapot. So if I turn this over and measure across the circular base, mine measures three inches across. So add an extra inch to that measurement and you'll need to cut out one circle of your outer fabric, one circle of lining fabric and one circle of wadding to that measurement. So that's three four inch circles I've cut out. Now with your wadding or your batting, however you call it, um, I'd recommend if you can get hold of it that you use insulated because that helps to, keep, to keep even more of the heat in. Um, I don't happen to have any, so I'm just using ordinary polyester wadding. That's fine. If you don't have any of the insulator, then you can use that as well. Okay, let's put that to one side for now. I'm going to join all of these together and mark the centre point because my outer pieces need to go from one side to the other. Remember on the tea cosy, the outer pieces are in two halves that kind of meet in the middle. So that's the bit that I'm going to do now. So these outer pieces need to be um, four times the size that they're going to go to because I'm going to gather those and shrink them down. So if I were to just fold this in half, finger crease it, and I'm just going to put a mark either side here with an erasable ink pen. If you measure this bit, it's only a rough guide. It doesn't have to be exactly to the, you know, to the eighth of an inch or the millimeter. I need four times that amount for my fabric. So my fabric measures 16 inches in length. And the height of the fabric, this again depends on the size of your teapot, that needs to go from that circle at the bottom to the top and imagine you've got enough for a frill on the top there as well okay so i've actually cut these to let me just double check that there's the circles these are 16 inches by seven inches in length so seven inches that way so again, if you've got an 800 mil teapot, this is going to fit, fit perfectly. I just wanted to explain if your teapot's a little bit bigger or even a little bit smaller, how you can adapt the sizes to make have that perfect fit. So 16 inches by um, 7 inches. And then for the wadding or the batting that I've put on the back of these pieces, I've cut them to the same length, but I've cut them to 4 and 3 quarter inches in width. And those are going to go across my fabric pieces, about a quarter of an inch from the bottom, then I've got a gap at the top. And that's because where this gather is around the top, there's not actually any wadding inside there. And I've just used some 505 spray, which is a repositionable spray adhesive just to hold those in place. Okay, so that goes on there. Measure these with a ruler if you want to make them Absolutely perfect. I've made a few so I can 
see by eye where they need to be. Okay. So I'm just going to hold these circles together again with my repositionable adhesive. And then I'm just going to sew very, very close to the edge and that's purely to hold all the layers together as we construct the teapot cover. There we go. So you go to the way there, you can go there, you can go there, and you can come here. So again, just a straight stitch, very close to the edge, so this is going to be within the seam allowance, so you don't see the stitches. And we'll just sew around the circle just to hold all of those layers together. Okay. Almost there, missed a little bit there, that doesn't really matter. Okay, that's it. I'll snip you off. And I'm just going to trim back the circle so that so I think it moved a little bit as I was sewing. There, so I've got that. And I've got that. Let's cut that off. Right, now I'm going to sew one piece of the outer fabric to one piece of lining right sides together. Oh, do make sure if you're using a printed fabric as well that you print it the right way around. And I'm just going to sew down the side, across the top and back down the opposite side. And we'll do that with both pieces. And I'm using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. I tend to use that for most of my projects. And if you prefer to pin, then that's absolutely fine. I tend not to. I, I do quite a bit of sewing and I get used to doing this without the pins. Sometimes you can find it more time consuming to take pins in and out than it is to actually sew. But if you prefer, and certainly if you're a beginner, you may find that useful. one side then we'll do the same with the other two pieces so again with the right sides together this gingham doesn't really have a right and wrong side and you come into a corner stop with a needle in the down position Whoops, down and that'll enable you to pivot without losing the line that you're stitching to. There we go, and then back down the final side. So you go to the way there. Then we're going to snip off the corners, so just cut straight across the corners and that will allow the corners to be a little bit more pointy when I turn this the right side out. And we'll turn this through. Like so. And the same with the other side. So that's how we're looking. I've got two pieces like that, then I need to go away and press them. Another little tip for you, um, because now we're not going to be turning this inside out or back again, you may find it useful to use a little bit more of your spray and just put a little bit of spray inside there and then that's going to hold it flat while we sew. So I'll go away and give these a press and we'll get back and finish off in just a second. So I've got two pieces now that look like this. So at the top end, so there's my open end at the bottom, I'm going to draw two lines which are going to be, um, they're going to have the channel for the ribbon to go through. 
<laughs> the, uh, on the instructions in the book, it'll tell you to draw one line at one and a half inches and one line at two inches, so you get a nice deep frill around the top. I'm adjusting this to make it that little bit smaller, so I'm putting one line at one and a half inches and one line at one inch, because you can adjust it. So one line here, I shall show you what that crunching noise is later on in the video. But the words dog and bone come to mind and she's loving it. All right, I'm using friction pen. Do be aware, um, and I know I say it many times, but if you're using a heat erasable pen of any description, do test a little bit on your fabric first of all, because sometimes they can bleach them. Um, fine behind something like this, because if it does discolour, or even if the, the line's still there afterwards, um, you're not going to see that when it's been sewn over and gathered, so that's not so bad. But if you're marking out patterns on dresses and things like that, I wouldn't use one of these. Right, so that's what I've got. So let's sew along this channel. At the start and the end of my sewing, I go backwards a few stitches and then forwards. And particularly on something like this, I'm going to thread ribbon through here, so I don't want those stitches coming undone. So literally sew over the top of the line. And again, reverse backwards when you get to the end. Then we'll turn around and come back down the opposite side. thinking it'd make a lovely gift idea, wasn't it? There's also somebody in the family that just loves a cup of tea. So the gift of a teapot, so I'm just looking at my scissors, um, and maybe a little pouch with some tea bags in it as well would work really well. There they are. I think that, that would get down well, wouldn't it? Some special tea bags, maybe some fruity ones. All right, there we go. There's also a dressing table mat in the book and a tray mat. So you could use the dressing table mat as maybe somewhere on your on a tea tray or on the table at the side of the sofa and have the tray mat as well. So you can serve your sandwiches and your tea and everything be coordinating. Right, now where the ends of this is, we need to unpick the stitches just in that seam in between the two channel lines that I've just sewn. And that will allow me to thread the ribbon through in a bit. So just be careful that you're unpicking the stitches and not cutting through the fabric. And the same on this side. There, that's quite easy. Just up to the stitch lines. And then on the open side of the fabric, I'll just snip that off, we're going to make a, a gathering stitch across the bottom. So I'm going to turn up the stitch length to the maximum on my machine, that's five millimetres. Leave a little bit of thread sticking out of the back. And I'm going to sew only about an eighth of an inch or a millimetre right up to the edge of the fabric. So I want this to be, uh, I want the, the gathering stitch to be enclosed in the seam allowance when I put the tea cosy together. So again, just run a straight line down here. Through both layers, this is only two layers of fabric, remember. Oh, don't go backwards and forwards because I want to pull those stitches. Um, remember I put the wadding that was a little bit short. That's so that it doesn't sit within the seam allowance. Makes it a bit easier to gather. If there's wadding where it's all gathered, then it's not going to gather quite as well. Right, now on the one end, I'm going to knot the two pieces of thread so I don't pull them out all together. If you're doing gathers on something like um, a dress or garments, then two rows of stitching would be preferable because it helps the gathering to sit flat. But on this, I just want to keep the actual gathered area to a minimum because I'm going to wrap bias binding around this. Now take your bottom thread. It's easier to pull the bottom thread than the top thread. And very gently start to pull and gather this. Don't pull it too hard, take your time, because we don't want the thread to snap. Because then you'll just have to sew it all over again. And I'm going to pull up these gathers until the whole piece is the same size as half of this, the base circle. I'll explain that a, a bit more clearly in just a second. So I can just smooth out those gathers. It's quite therapeutic, really. 
It'll all be pretty tight as well when it's finished. Could have started from both ends, couldn't I? That might have been easier. Have the gathers meet in the middle. Again, just keep taking it gently. We don't want to snap the thread. Almost there. Right, and then the base here, that semicircle shape that's forming, I want that to be the same size as half of this base. So from one line around to the other line, and that is just about perfect. So with the two threads I have on this end, which I've knotted around my finger, I'm going to tie those into a knot so it doesn't come ungathered. Right, so we'll snip off those threads. There. And I've already made the other piece. So you can see the shape of the tea cosy coming together now. That's how it's going to be with the circle in the bottom. Here we go again. Right. Now these pieces are going to be sewn to the circle um, lining sides together. So from one half there all the way around the top to the other side here. You may find it easier and let me just show you how you can just tack this first of all. Particularly if you know you're new to sewing you may not just want to put this straight into the sewing machine. You could find it easier if you hand sew it first. And of course it makes sure it fits as well. So from one line there, I'm just going to do an over edge stitch. I can even out those gathers a little bit as well. It's always a little bit tricky as well when you're sewing um, a straight piece of fabric to a curved piece of fabric. This makes it a lot easier. It is only a bone, honestly, it's not a brick she's chewing. Right, so anyway, <laughs> that's going to be hand stitched to the other side here, and then I'm going to go over again with, <laughs> with the sewing machine. So I'll carry on doing that. I should go and stroke my dog, and I'll see you again in a second. Okay, so that's how we're looking. Didn't sew round on the machine because um, I made the, the stitches so small and tight it doesn't really need it and bias binding is going on here anyway now. So those are the two pieces, looks like a butterfly attached to the circle in the centre. This is the outside and that's what it's looking at on the inside. So it's all looking quite nice. Now this bit is a bit fiddly. I'm going to put some bias tape around the bottom. So we'll fold over the end of the bias tape by about a centimetre, half an inch or something like that. And then we're going to sew this around the circle from the top, so from the gathered side, so that the edges of the bias binding meet the edge of the circle. So do take your time with this little bit, because again, it can be a little bit fiddly. This is another area that you may want to hand tack first. Right, so let's pop you under there and I'm just going to sew, just get that started, um, along the crease of the bias binding. When I say in the book, make sure that the gathers are flat. This is what I mean because it's tempting as you sew to push all the gathers kind of towards you. That's the way that they go. But if you keep them flat and at right angles to the circle, you'll get a neater finish. Okay, edges together. It's a lot easier not to pin with this bit. And then take your time and sew round in that semicircle 
stop with the needle down, keep arranging all of these gathers. It, it kind of makes sense when you start doing it, it's not actually that difficult, it's just a bit fiddly. If you're doing a larger tea cosy then it's going to be a lot easier because your circle will be bigger. Okay, just line that up. Try not to pull the bias tape too much. Although it's cut on the bias so it's got a certain amount of give, we don't want it to pull so much that it puckers up. So just try and keep it nice and flat. That's one half. And then around this side, making my join nice and neat under here. I hope you can see what I'm doing. Basically, lining up the edge of the bias tape, needle down, folding all of these creases away, and so. You should be able to sew through the layers quite easily as well. I'm only using a universal needle on here. I'm not using um, a denim needle or anything like that. Needle down. And so. Nice thing is, if your stitches are a little bit wobbly, um, you can always go around again. I think this is going to be okay. You just wait and see in just a second. Thought I'd caught that. Okay. Almost there. Um, I find it easier as well to have my bias tape a little bit longer than I actually need and then cut it down. There's nothing worse than having your tape a bit too short. So there's my second piece. Right, I'm coming to the overlap section now. So now I can trim this back. So there's the bit where I started. I'm going to overlap that by about half an inch. So snip off this side. Fold that flat. No need to fold over the second part of the bias tape as we come round. Okay, let's see if that worked. Right. That is actually looking perfect. So now on the inside again, I've got that nice neat finish here. What I'm going to do on the outside is to hand sew. It would be impossible to sew that on the sewing machine, wouldn't it? So we're going to fold over, let me cut this away. Fold over the bias tape around the edge. You can trim this circle back a little bit if you need to, but basically we're going to fold the bias binding over, take your needle and thread, I like to keep the knot of my needle and thread inside the seam allowance so you don't see it, and then we're going to slip stitch all the way around and cover up that line of stitches that I've just made. So a slip stitch is into the fold of the bias tape, fold that over, into the fabric directly underneath, push the needle across and then come up again a quarter of an inch maximum from your first stitch. So into the circle, across a quarter of an inch, just catch the fold of that fabric, uh, of the bias tape, sorry. So pull that over, fold it around, into the circle, across, and catch the fabric. So on the outside, it's looking really neat. And actually, on the inside, it's looking really neat as well. Okay, so I'll carry on sewing all the way around. Then we'll thread the ribbon through, and we're done. So that's how we're looking at the moment. Um, so the final thing that we've got to do is to thread the ribbon through the channel. So I'm taking a safety pin. If you've got a bodkin, use a bodkin. And I'm simply going to thread through one end of the channel here. Just one long piece of ribbon goes all the way around. So just 
keep pushing that through. So, I suppose, you know, I was just thinking you could do the same um, kind of project for a vase cover. It doesn't have to be a teapot, does it? If you've got a little round vase, like a, you know, the goldfish bowl type vases, you can make a very pretty cover for that. Or even a plant pot for that matter. Just be careful when you water it that the water doesn't come out. Right, where I'm pushing the, um, the safety pin, it's going into the seam allowance, um, which makes it a little bit difficult. So I'm just going to pop the end of a pair of scissors in there just to make a hole, there it is, for the safety pin to come out. Pull that through a little bit, but not all the way. And then straight across and back down the other side again. Nice to have everything coordinating as well, wouldn't it? So if you do have your tray mat or the dressing table mat that you're making from the book, maybe you've got some leftover fabric from your kitchen curtains. That would be nice. And if you've already got um, any of my books that have aprons in or if you've seen any of the tutorials or patterns for them, you could have a completely coordinated kitchen, couldn't you? This is a bit of fun as well. It's a little bit different to the kind of tea cases that just pop over the top of your teapot. There we go. Hello. There we are. Right. I will need to trim that ribbon down a little bit as well, I think. But again, better too long than too short. So let's just arrange the gathers neatly. Take my pin out. And try it on for size. So the spout goes through there. This wraps around nice and snugly. Pull the drawstring nice and tight. And tie that in a bow just at the back of the handle. There, you'll find as well when it's been uh, gathered like this for a while, um, it, it kind of remembers where the gathers are, as you can see with the, the one that I've already made. It kind of stays like that. And I'm just going to trim the end of my ribbon. Cut these off at an angle to stop the fabric from fraying. There, and we're finished. Better go and put the kettle on. <laughs>